my name's Ash from Future Duck, and welcome back to this short interview series where I'm taking every module from my online interview course and I'm dissecting it to the bare bones to give you quick summaries from each of the 13 modules. So today we're going to be looking at the multidisciplinary team and I'm going to give you the bare essentials that you need to make sure you score well when being asked questions about the MDT at your interview. Remember, I'm doing 13 of these videos in this series, so check out the playlist, which has all 13, and I'm releasing them every couple of days. So make sure that you hit subscribe and turn on notifications in the bottom corner so that you don't miss any and you get alerted as soon as they come out. So why is it that we actually need to know about the multidisciplinary team? Well, when you become a doctor, you are going to be part of that team and it helps to know every member that's involved so that you can get the best out of each person that's available to you when providing care to your patient. And also, you need to know a little bit about all the roles involved so that when somebody asks you why you particularly want to be a doctor, you have good reasons why you want to take that one rather than all the other available roles in the MDT. So as I'm doing with all of these videos, I'm taking you on a quick whistle-stop tour to give you the bare bones for all you need to know for this particular module so now I'll quickly rattle through everything that you need to know about the MDT for your medicine interviews. So what is the multidisciplinary team? Well, the MDT is a group of doctors, nurses, and allied healthcare professionals that all work together to provide optimal healthcare to patients. So the things that you need to know on the day of your interview about the MDT are, firstly, what is the MDT? What are the roles of the MDT members? Why are they important? And then you need to incorporate an example from your own life or work experience, illustrating the importance of the members of the MDT. So earlier we used this term allied healthcare professionals. So what exactly are allied healthcare professionals? So NHS England describes four recognized allied healthcare professions. So these are degree-based vocations that allow anything ranging from clinical work to research to education. And people from the allied healthcare professions can go on to earn their prescriber's rights, perform procedures, therapies, and medical interventions. So I'm going to link you to the NHS England site where they describe and briefly talk about all the 14 allied healthcare professions. And I'll quickly touch on each of them now very, very quickly. So we have art therapists who use art as a form of psychotherapy. We have drama therapists who are both clinicians and artists that draw on the knowledge of both theatre and drama to use performance arts as a medium for psychological therapy. Then we have music therapists who use music to engage clients in live musical interaction, and that improves their well-being and communication skills. We have chiropodists or podiatrists, and they provide essential assessment, evaluation, and foot care for a wide range of patients. We have dietitians who diagnose and treat diet and nutritional problems. We have occupational therapists who work in a wide range of environments and also providing a wide range of therapies that they offer for their patients. Then we have ODPs who support patients in their perioperative care. We have orthoptists who help people with problems relating to their vision. We have osteopaths who provide holistic care in the musculoskeletal system. Prosthesists who help patients, for example, who have limb loss. Orthotists who help people with gait. Paramedics who work with the local ambulance service. Physiotherapists who help people with their functional ability. Speech and language therapists who do a wide range of things ranging from speech, language, communication, even swallowing. And finally, radiographers who help with all things imaging and they can either be diagnostic or therapeutic. As you can see, there are a wide range of skills there who help provide healthcare to patients in a variety of ways. So it's really important to know a little bit about each of those and check out that website where you can read a little bit more. And I'll link to some YouTube videos where you can see a quick description of each job and get an insight of what kind of thing they provide for each patient. Just to point out that obviously this is a very quick summary about the entire MDT. So not to underestimate just how important each of those roles are. The next thing we'll come on to discuss is nursing. A very common common question at medical school is why not be a nurse instead? And it's really important that you know a lot about the nursing profession and all the things involved in it so that you can actually answer with validity why you want to be a doctor rather than a nurse. Especially because these days, nurses' duties are ever expanding and they can do a lot of things that doctors can. So it's important to know the difference between the two. Nursing generally is known to have four areas, which includes adults, children, learning difficulties, and mental health. And over recent years, two areas that have shown a lot of growth and development are those of advanced nurse practitioners 
and nurse specialists. Advanced nurse practitioners are typically found in urgent care centers, emergency departments, and GPs. They're able to help with diagnosis and treatment of patients and eventually go on to become autonomous practitioners themselves. Nurse specialists are nurses that have gone on to specialize in a particular condition, typically those that are very common and ubiquitous, like diabetes, for example, and they are able to diagnose, see, treat, and manage patients in themselves. They may run clinics where they can prescribe medication to their patients or times. One role that has recently become increasingly popular is that of physician associate. Now they describe the role as one that supports doctors in the diagnosis and management of patients. And when you see a PA practicing in a, an emergency department, for example, there will be very few differences between what they're doing and what the doctor is doing. And it's actually quite hard to tell the difference between the two. So I'll quickly run you through the roles of a PA. They are taking medical histories, examinations, diagnosing, carrying out therapeutic and diagnostic procedures, analyzing test results, and developing management plans. So again, make sure you go away and read a lot about PAs and understand exactly what they do and find the differences between those and doctors for your reasons why you want to do that rather than be a PA yourself. So typical questions that will come up at interview relating to the MDT will be, one, something along the lines of, tell me your experience of the MDT that you've seen in your exposure at hospital. Then it will be things like, why not a nurse? And why would you rather be a doctor instead? And then it will be something again like, tell me about the cooperation that you saw at the MDT in action on your work experience. And there are some important famous cases that have occurred when the MDT has failed. So if you want to learn more about that, just go to my in full interview course that you can see in the link below. And we talk about all the cases in depth that you need to know about and be able to discuss at interview. So in summary, when answering questions about the MDT at your medical school interviews, you need to know what the MDT is, why it's important, what the key roles are, and then know a little bit about each individual what role so that you're able to explain why you want to do medicine and be a doctor rather than engage in some of the nursing or allied healthcare professions. Again, if you want to go into further depth with these, I have a online medical school interview course where I have more than 15 hours of videos, including mocking interviews, model answers, and obviously lots of online lessons where you can learn all about this in lots and lots of depth. I'll also link to the playlist of all 13 of these short summary series. And if you want to, you can hit subscribe and turn on notifications because I'll be releasing one of these videos every couple of days. So therefore, if you click on that, you'll make sure that you don't miss out. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.